now. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world today. Thanks for joining us on this DevOps.com webinar, Standardizing Jenkins with CloudBees Jenkins Team. And of course, that is sponsored by CloudBees. We have a really great webinar on tap today with two really great speakers, and I, I'm, it's one I'm sure you're going to get a whole lot out of. But before we get things kicked off, I would like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, um, this webinar is being recorded. So if at uh, any time you miss part of the webinar, you want to listen to it again, uh, the recording will be available probably about 24 hours after the webinar. And uh, you will receive an email link to the recorded webinar. And then as well, um, you can also check back on the DevOps.com website for a, uh, a, an archived copy of it. And at any time during the presentation, if you have a question for any of our two esteemed speakers, you may submit your question during, uh, during the webinar. As I said, any time, just use the, question, the, sorry, the questions uh, section there on the control panel. And then we will get to the audience questions before we close out today's webinar. Okay, with that, I would like to go ahead and introduce our two speakers for today. We have Bhavani Rao, who's a product marketing manager, and Andres Rodriguez, who is a technical lead, and both are from CloudBees. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, thank you, Charlene. My name is uh, Bhavani Rao. I'm a, based in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm a product marketing manager at CloudBees. Andres, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Thanks for, for joining. My name is Andres Rodriguez. I'm a tech lead in the CloudBees Engineering Organization, and I'm based here in Seville, Spain, and I will be running the, the demo later in the webinar. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'm, we're both very, very excited uh, that you guys joined us today of all days because if you have been watching our, our website or uh, getting our Google alerts or getting... Um, uh, tw tweets from us. We just announced the public availability of uh, CloudBees Jenkins team. But before I launch into uh, the, the product, I want to give you a lineup on what we're going to be talking about today. So specifically, my intention or our, our intention on this webinar is to give you a discussion around what are some of the challenges that teams face with implementing Jenkins within their or own organization. Specifically, if you were a team and you were trying to use Jenkins for continuous delivery, what are the challenges with using that product as is out of the box? So then one way to answer that problem or that challenge is with CloudBees Jenkins team. And I'll break into or drill down on some of the components of CloudBees Jenkins team, which would be the CloudBees Jenkins distribution, the CloudBees assurance program, which is a verification process of identifying the, uh, of, of, of vetting the plugins as well as the Jenkins core itself and of the support aspect of it. Pro following from there, Andres will take the baton and do a demo and he'll highlight a few features uh, through Beekeeper as, as well as other functionality. And then we'll do a quick summary and, and after the, before the summary, we'll do a, a real short poll to see if any interest for some, you know, and uh, from there, we'll open it up for Q&A. So if you have any questions, as Charlene mentioned, please just go ahead and type them in into the chat window, and we'll address them as we go. Let's get started. So let me set the stage for you. I think many of the people on this call are very familiar with the fact that Jenkins is the number one automation platform for continuous integration. And it's re rapidly advancing to become the number one automation platform for continuous delivery. And the reason for that is because it's proven to create complex continuous delivery pipelines. Along those lines, another huge asset of Jenkins is that it's got this enormous community of, of users who contribute plugins on a regular basis. There's well over 1.7 million users out there there's a, roughly at this at this point in time about 1,300 plugins that are able to connect Jenkins to a variety of different tools in the DevOps space, running all, the gamut from code and commit all the way to deploy. 
which is fantastic. So that really, you know, empowers Jenkins as a solid platform for doing CI. However, when it comes to doing continuous delivery, it can be a little bit challenging. And the reason is because some of the challenges that teams face with Jenkins is that the rate of innovation is so fast with regard to the plugins, the components themselves, and many of them are developed independently. So it's always a debate as to whether they actually work well together or in your particular instance. So do the plugins actually work as advertised? Because it might have worked for someone else, but you don't really know if it works for yourself because your, your environment is slightly different than when it was, where it was developed and committed to. And then if we upgrade Jenkins to try to take advantage of what the latest functionality is, how can we do so without it crashing, especially if we have Jenkins running in a production environment? Now, given all that, if we, if we, if we have any questions, any, any issues, who do we talk to when there's trouble? Is there a central person we can go to and choke? Well, that's the reason that we are proud to announce, or very excited to announce, Cloud Beast Jenkins team, which just came out as a, in the form of uh, publicly announced via press release a few hours ago. And um, in one sentence, Cloud Beast Jenkins team is the Cloud Beast Jenkins distribution with curated, verified integrations and expert support for organizations in need of a reliable continuous delivery solution. So let me break this further. Let's talk about some of the components of the product and then how it benefits you as a potential subscriber or user of the product. So the, as I mentioned, uh, the product is broken into three different pieces. We have uh, the rock solid Jenkins distribution, which consists of both the plugins as well as the core. We have a CloudBees Assurance Program, which is a process for evaluating, testing, hardening the Jenkins core, as well as the corresponding plugins to make sure that they work well together. And lastly, we have a support aspect, which is more than just being able to have someone to call, but a, a set of valuable resources that you can tap into at any time. So having said that, what's the corresponding benefits? What's, what's the value behind each of these components? Well, there's a, I'm just going to hit upon the highlights here. But basically, if you have a rock solid Jenkins distribution, that makes it, basically makes it so that you don't have to worry about upgrading. You're going to eventually get to a point where you have boring upgrades. You hit one button, and you can get into the next release that comes about with regard to having verified integrations or plugins that work seamlessly with each other, you don't need to question or have any guesswork with regard to what plugin does this, whether it works with your existing tool set, set uh, and, and then you can take advantage of the entire Jenkins plugin ecosystem. And then with regard to support, you know, you can access Jenkins supports at any time so you can, you know, not have to worry about putting Jenkins into a production environment and having critical business business critical applications being delivered through that platform uh, and not having someone to talk to. So the end result is that, you know, the benefits combined to be able to deliver uh, continuous delivery with peace of mind. So I'm going to talk through each of these and what I'm going to do is for each of the components, starting with the rock solid Jenkins distribution, the, then the CAP program and then the support, I'm going to give you some of the high level statements on what those what the definitions are what you get with this and then I'm going to follow up each section with the uh, benefits that are associated with that so let's start off with the uh, Jenkins distribution itself so as I mentioned it's a rock solid distribution of plugins and core so we've basically hardened it made sure that the that the plugins work uh, together we combine those two into what we call an envelope that's issued on a monthly basis it's a four to six week cadence, but for the purposes of simplification, I just say, hey, it's a monthly basis. And it's taken from the most current Jenkins uh, LTS line available to us that's stable. And we also endeavor to try to, to be able to allow our subscribers or customers to be able to upgrade as long as they're within a rolling nine month window of you know, the last, you know, last couple of releases. As part of this Jenkins distribution, 
we have taken the lead when it comes to delivering security fixes. So with an open source, commu open source uh, community, you always have the challenge of you know, security uh, threats and we, CloudBees has taken the lead with regard to being able to deliver uh, security for the community. And I'd like to just highlight that in the next couple of slides. So for example, we recently learned a few months ago uh, that there was a security threat to Jenkins at a conference. So we were no immediately notified our customers about the threat and started commenced, commenced work on creating a corresponding fix. Within a few days, five days to be exact, we went ahead and ha we had the patch ready. We released it to customers. We notified our customers via email. And now we've even improved upon that. We not only have to, which is, we not only have we notified customers via email, but we can actually now uh, notify customers within the product itself through in-product notifications and uh, do something called incremental upgrades, which lets you go ahead and install that patch uh, directly once you get that notification. This is something that, that Andreas will show as part of the demo. So just to, just to quickly wrap up with regard to security, we're taking the lead with you know, trying to safeguard the best interests of the community by you know, trying to address security threats as soon as we know about them. And we continue on a regular basis to, to stand and watch guard for the benefit uh, of the Jenkins community. Uh, so having said that, let me just wrap up real quickly on some of the benefits behind the feature, which is the CloudBees Jenkins distribution. Well, you get the latest innovation that the Jenkins community has because we're picking up a, either a monthly or an incremental update. You get to eliminate any downtime worries because you're working with a very stable uh, software product. It's not just the core, but also the plugins that have been tested to work as one cohesive unit. You get to have excitingly boring one-click upgrades. So those days of having to worry about, oh my God, will Jenkins crash on me because I'm gonna take this load, this next release, all that can be a thing of the past. And then you no longer have to worry about the security fixes because we proactively go about the process of notifying you and giving you the option through incremental updates to um, pick up the latest security fixes, uh, which we'll show you later on in the, in the demo. So let's move on to the next component, which will be the CloudBees Assurance Program. I would like to call the CloudBees Assurance Program the engine that is under the hood. And what I mean by that is that the CloudBees Assurance Program is the process that we use to actually deliver the CloudBees Jenkins distribution. And it's a rigorous vetting process for verifying the Jenkins core and plugins. The di diagram on the right is a oversimplification of many of the tests that we do. This, I do have the slide, but it's such a detailed slide that it, it, it's not necessary, you know, it would be better to just d highlight the, you know, the value that we provide. And we're basically testing the top open source plugins uh, as, individ as individual components. We also do a interoperability test of the Jenkins core and plugins in combination to curate components and then verify the corresponding upgrade paths. So we, we've tested it and validated that, hey, yeah, this is an upgrade path that's valid for people within that nine month window. And we've got a significant investment in, in, in this CloudBees Assurance Program. There's well over 30 plus engineers plus hundreds of hours of testing that are put into every release doing regression testing and a variety of different types of testing. So this is a program that has a significant investment. It's very difficult to replicate you know, easily because of the fact that it doesn't make sense for many customers or subscribers to have a similar program because the focus as a, as a subscriber or customer should be around <clears throat> delivering software faster and not so much around trying to validate which tools are good or not. So the CAP program takes that burden off of you and puts it on us uh, so that we are now responsible for making sure that's happening on a regular continuous basis. This is a huge value, the subscription, because when you purchase the CloudBees Jenkins team subscription, you get the benefit of having uh, of, you know, engineers who are dedicated to making sure that 
Jenkins, the, the Cloudbees Jenkins distribution we send out is stable, it's upgradable, and it's secure. And it's, they issue updates on a regular basis. It's continuous. We increase the number of plugins that we test on a regular basis. So I'm going to sh show some of that. Uh, the uh, functionality or, or the benefits that the CAP program provides is exposed through a feature called Beekeeper Upgrade Assistant. I have a screenshot of that in, coming up. But more importantly, Andres will also just demo that uh, feature. So this, uh, this feature will expose some of the, of the uh, benefits that uh, some of the, the, uh, the deliverables from the CloudBees Assurance Program. So a little bit more about CAP. So being the, in the, in, given that we are in the DevOps space and we're delivering continuous delivery uh, software, we actually, as, you would, as some people would say, we manufacture dog food and we eat our own dog food in the sense that we literally um, use our own software to deliver two types of releases. We have a rolling release and incremental releases. So a rolling release is sent out every four to six weeks, and I've kind of oversimplified it by saying it's a monthly release. But this is where we incorporate some of the latest innovations from the Jenkins community, uh, whether that be in the core or in the plugins, and then issue it out, as well as add any security fixes that have been, uh, that have been implemented recently. And each release brings a new recommended configuration. This whole process is managed through Beekeeper. The other option is the other release that we have is incremental upgrades. And this refers specifically to plugins or security fixes that we deliver in between the rolling releases. So rather than having to wait for a rolling release every four to six weeks, we have the option to push out incremental upgrades and then notify you in the product in the product itself that there's an incremental upgrade available as a version number that'll pop in and you can then change, decide if you want to to upgrade a plugin or accept a security release. Um, it has the same level of confidence and hardening as a rolling release and it has the adva added advantage of identifying for you what is going to be changing, which what components are going to be upgraded. So I have here a screenshot of the Beekeeper Upgrade Assistant, which is the front end or the UI for the CloudBees Assurance Program. So I'd like to have Andres speak to the details on this slide. So uh, we will see later in the demo the, the user interface for the CloudBees Assurance Program, which is the Beekeeper Upgrade Assistant. This UI is just the tip of the iceberg of the work that is involved in making Classic Jenkins team a, a reality. The, the big, really big and continuous effort is the one involved in making the hardened distribution, evolving it through time and getting the, the new features and boot fixes with the level of confidence and, and security we want to provide our, our customers. But uh, talking about Beekeeper, basically it's a component that is installed in every cloud with Jenkins instance that performs continuous monitoring of the instance, uh, looking uh, for the installed components, the, how the update centers are configured so that they can pick the, the upgrades correctly, it helps maintain the instant inside the recommended configuration that is upgraded in each in each role in or, or incremental releases. It helps uh, doing that by filtering the the plugins that are offered during the plugin manager. We will also see that during during the demo. It also reports any deviation that it found in in your instance configuration according to the to the recommended one. And if you want, in instead of performing the correct actions that Beekeeper is going to, to propose you, you can tell Beekeeper to perform that enforcement automatically. And if he will perform the changes, installing pl missing plugins or upgrading plugins that, that need an upgrade so that we can maintain the instance inside the, the configuration that CloudBees is recommending for, for each of the, of the versions of, of CGT. Avani? Yeah, thank you, Andres. So, well, some of the out here I want to show you some of the output from the CAP program and so as part of the CAP program we identify those plugins that are either verified or compatible with uh, each of the of the distributions and here's just a sampling of some of the plugins that we've verified through the, the program but for a more complete list you need to go to uh, CloudBees network which is a portal uh, and I have a slide on that later on in this discussion, in this presentation as well. 
and that portal has uh, the um, uh, the ability to filter and identify in real time which plugins are are, are uh, valid or compa verified or compatible. So verified plugins are 100% bulletproof type plugins. Then we have something called compatible plugins. Compatible plugins are next up on the roadmap to being tested and verified. These are plugins that have shown a high degree of, of quality and uh, a lot, very popular amongst the community. So we've got them staged up as the next items to be uh, certified, to be verified, uh, to move into uh, the next stage of, uh, of uh, you know, of 100%ness. So from there, let me just wrap up and say that, Hill, okay, we've talked a little bit about the CloudBees Assurance Program, saying that, you know, this is a huge value, the subscription, because you know, you get acts, you get a, an engine under the hood that continuously delivers you updates of Jenkins Core and plugins, a growing list uh, of plug plugins. So the net benefit of that is that you don't have to deal with a thousand or thirteen hundred plugins and have, trying to sift and vet through all, all those on your own. You can immediately zero in and identify those plugins that are going to work best for you, and pick the ones that work best with your favorite DevOps tools. And because of the fact that Beekeeper does the work of notifying you when upgrades are available, it also helps monitor and identify any configuration issues. You can um, keep within a certain com compliance circle. And what I mean by that is that you can decide on your own, hey, I'm going to stay within the recommended configuration. However, if you want to pick up a plugin that Beekeeper doesn't recommend, you can go and get that plugin and you can install it, but Beekeeper will still it will review, monitor your instance and realize, hey, you got something out there that's out of compliance and just let you know and give you uh, an alert on that. And lastly, the CloudBees Assurance Program as a continuous um, process, it regularly publishes information on plugin stability, security, and compatibility directly in the CloudBees network. It gives you immediate guidance on which plugins are robust and compatible you know, it even tells you if there's any issues with any particular security aspects of that of, of that plugin. So if you, I have a screenshot on Clobby's network, you can go there and register as a um, as a non-subscriber, but you can still get as not as a not as a customer, but you can still get access to a lot of information, such as uh, identify some of the plugins that are uh, verified and compatible. So let's go to uh, talking a little bit about customer success. And this is a huge component of the offering as well. Um, so we, we've got the basics covered, which is being able to have access to developer level support engineers how, any time of day and pretty much in any time zone. We follow a uh, follow the I should say follow the sun support process. So regardless of where you are in the world, we've got somebody to help you out. In addition to that, as part of the support offering, we have assigned customer success managers. These are people that help white glove the whole process of onboarding you uh, once you, you know, sign up for a CloudBees Jenkins team subscription. So they'll help your, your organization or your team get onboarded and help you from, get you familiar with the product as well as convey the best practices, etc. We also offer services through CloudBees professional services, such as you know, being able to help architect your instance and or optimize your instance. And then we offer free training through the CloudBees University. And then lastly, I mentioned a little bit about CloudBees Network, which I'm going to jump into right now. Oh, actually, actually, let me go into it later on. But CloudBees Network is a portal, which I'll go into in two slides down, that'll talk about there's a user community you can access, so you can talk to other people that are using CloudBees products, documentation. you can get access to submitting tickets, you can, uh, um, uh, you can get a knowledge base and, and identify potential best practices. So having said that, you know, we strive as, a customer, as, a, as part of our customer success organization to deliver 100% customer satisfaction. And as you can see, these are some metrics that we've captured over the last couple of quarters. Uh, we're pretty close to hitting that target and we, you know, based off of, you know, trying to empower our customers from a support, training, consultation, and certification perspective. So let's talk a little bit about CloudBees Network. If you go to go.cloudbees.com, this is a portal 
that serves as a central repository of Jenkins knowledge and access to free training if you're a customer, uh, if you're a subscriber or a customer, and uh, as well as a community where you can talk to your peers and identify what kind of challenges they're going through. If you're not a subscriber, you can still get access, you get a login and password and, and still get some uh, valuable resources. So I welcome you to, to do that if you, if you have the, the time. Um, having said that, let me just wrap up by saying a little bit about our support organization and above and beyond because of the fact that it's above and beyond just having someone to call uh, and, and talk to about a particular issue. So, you know, obviously if you have access to, to Jenkins experts, you can, you can solve issues, uh, you know, on the fly. You can get the, the help that you need immediately. Um, and then you have, if you have the free self-based train, online training, lets you be able to get Jenkins certified. You can get an understanding of a better understanding of CI and CD, not just for yourself, but the entire team. And then we have assigned customer success managers that proactively engage with you from day one, so that you get the most of the value from your subscription. And then I mentioned a little bit about Clobby's networks, where you can Clobby's network, the portal where you can find answers and resolve issues with the knowledge base, diagnostic tools, and talk to other people in the community. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Andres go through a demo and take it away, Andres. Thanks, Mavani. Uh, well, now we're going to go through a pre-recorded demo for additional smoothness, but before doing that, I want to uh, highlight the different concepts that we are going to see throughout the demo. We will start doing an initial installation of CloudBit Jenkins team. And we will see that it's really easy to perform and we will highlight the differences between Jenkins and CloudBit Jenkins team. When the instance is installed, we will show some of the differences in the, in the behavior when Beekeeper is enabled and disabled. Okay, we, of course, we recommend that you always keep Beekeeper enabled, but there's always the, the escape hatch to, okay, I want to, uh, to avoid this, in this, this stuff, there are things that are going to change in the instant and we are going to show that in the demo. Going back to having Beekeeper enabled, we are, we are going to see some of the elements that are visible in the, in the UI uh, related to the cloud Business Assurance Program. Basically, the monitoring and enforcement of the recommended configuration. To do that, during the demo, we are going to manually, without disabling Beekeeper, get the instance out of the recommended configuration we will see how Beekeeper detects the issue, uh, provides the, the recommended solution, and even uh, let, you, uh, let you make Beekeeper uh, perform the correction automatically. As a last time, we, uh, the last part of the demo, we will perform an installation of an incremental upgrade. The thing is that it's going to be based on a real situation. The, the version we are performing the demo with, which was released just with, uh, saw a security issue just one day after the release was performed. One of the plugins that is included in the distribution, really a really important plugin, had a security, a security issue in just one day after the release and in less than 24 hours we had the incremental upgrade in place with all the hardening and, all, and the same level of confidence of a normal release available for CloudBit Jenkins team customers. Okay, so we are going to move to the At this point, we're going to queue up the demo. Okay. So we're going to start now. Okay. Uh, CloudBit Jenkins team is based on Jenkins 2, of course, so it's secure by default, which is, was one of the of the new features in, in the Jenkins 2. So we start by uh, introducing the administrator password, and we are welcome with the setup wizard. In the setup wizard, we can either uh, go for a normal installation with the plugins that are suggested, or customize that, that list. I'm going to stop here for a second to highlight a couple of stuff. The list of suggested and proposed plugins in the setup wizard is specific to CloudBit Jenkins team, and of course, is based on the contents of the curated distribution that forms the base of CloudBit Jenkins team. And there are two main differences between how the installation works in Jenkins and how the installation 
installation works in CloudBit Jenkins team. Basically, the first one is that CloudBit Jenkins team installations can be fully performed offline. With all the plugins that are offered in the, in the setup wizard, you can perform an installation without an internet connection. The other, the other main difference is that CloudBit Jenkins team installations are repeatable. That means that if, if I perform an installation today and I install the same version a few months in the future and I select the same plugins, I will get exactly the same instance. So this is really important in, in enterprise deployments. Construct that to, um, to a Jenkins installation in which the plugins that are selected are downloaded in the, in the newest version available at the time of install, which ends up providing different results for each installation depending on the moment on time. Now we are in the welcome page of CloudBit Jenkins team and we see that there is one initial alert. It's an incremental upgrade that we will work with at the, at the end of the demo. That alert will remain in, until that moment. So and this is Beekeeper. Basically, this is the, the main page of the Beekeeper Upgrade Assistance. Right now, everything is green. It means that you are running the instance inside a recommended configuration. After every initial installation, you will be always in a, in a recommended configuration. And if we go through this page, we can see the different components that Beekeeper is monitoring. Okay? If we go now to the Plugin Manager in Jenkins, We can see that the list of updates is empty. Why is that? Because I'm running in the recommended configuration. All the plugins that I have installed are in the version that Beekeeper is recommended. So there's no need to offer to offer an upgrade. They are in the versions that the Cloud Business Assurance program has vetted. They work well together. Okay. However, if I go to Beekeeper and, and disable it. What is, the, what is going to happen right now? The instances start working similar to a normal Jenkins instance. So I, if I go back to the plugin manager, I'm going now, okay, I can see there are many, many plugins for which there is an update available. For each of these plugins, I will have to make a decision that, hey, do I take the last version or not? What are the risks of taking each of these changes? There are many changes, so the number of poss possible configurations is almost exponential. When you are enrolling the CloudBit Assurance Program, you get the updates by picking the upgrades that the Keeper uh, proposes. In this sense, you get coordinated upgrades of all the plugins after going through all the hardening and QA processes included in the, in the CloudBit Assurance Program. Okay, now we are going to go back and enable Beekeeper again because we are going to keep Beekeeper enabled for the, for the rest of the demo and we are going to break the recommended configuration even with Beekeeper enabled. And how are we going to do that? Doing something that is possible inside, inside Jenkins that is installing a plugin manual. We are going to go to the advanced tab in the plugin manager and upload a plugin that of course, we know it's outside the, the recommended configuration. It's Active Directory in version 2.0, and we are going to install it. The plugin is installed. Everything is working correctly. And now we already see in the header that there are two alerts. Something has happened. And we see the warning in the Manage Jenkins play that there are issues that may be compromising the stability. And here we can see that Beekeeper has detected that the Active Directory plugin is not running in the recommended configuration, the, in the recommended version. Recommended version is 2.4, but we are using version 2.0. So the recommended action is that the plugin should be upgraded. And in fact, we can uh, tell Beekeeper to do that automatically. So we allow that enforcement option. Okay. And now we can restart the instance. Every time a plugin is changed in Jenkins, a restart is, is needed. Plugins can be installed dynamically, but changing them involves a, a restart. Okay, so we acknowledge the restart. We perform the installation. We 
talk with the admin user we created during the initial install. And if we go to Beekeeper, in the header we already see that one of the alerts have already disappeared. But if we go to the Beekeeper upgrade assistant, we can see that everything is running in the recommended configuration. Okay, here we can see the list of elements that Beekeeper is is monitoring, everything is working correctly at that point. So we are going to pick that security upgrade. Let me pause for a second. And as I said, this release that we are using for the demo was prepared last week. Just 24 hours later, there was a security advisory in Jenkins related to the Git client plugin. It's a really important component of every Jenkins installation which is using Git as a source control system. So just in less than 24 hours, the, we, the, the CAP team get the new plugin upgrade, made all the checks so that the new recommended configuration passes the quality bar needed for something to be delivered to our customers and make the plugin upgrade available as an incremental upgrade of the recommended configuration. Okay, so we go here. So we can see that the um, that uh, there's a new avail a new revision available. That the the changes that are going to be included is the Git client plugin, which has been changed from version two three zero to two four four, and we can choose to upgrade the the system. As you can see, there is a simulation of what is going to happen if you decide to pick that, which we are going to accept right now. Okay, the beekeeper is staging the components needed to perform the, the incremental upgrades. And given that the upgrades would involve a restart, he asked us to, to perform that, that operation. Um, we accept restarting. And when we start, we will see, we will go back to Beekeeper and we will see that we are running the same version, but in an, in an updated revision and all the components are in the situation that we were expecting. So as we can see, there was a release, there was a, a security advisory affecting one of the components involved in the release. In this case, it was less than 24 hours to have the change available for our customers as an incremental upgrade which makes the difference that it's not just a plugin that, I, that I'm upgrading. I'm upgrading the whole configuration to, to be in a new one that has the same level of hardening and quality that the one that was initially downloaded. So that's it for, for the demo and I'm turning it back to, to Babani. Uh, thank you. So I, I just make sure that yeah, for anyone who didn't catch that is that we went to revision two with the uh, addition of the incremental uh, update. So. Sure. Okay, so it's back to me, and I'm going to go ahead and say that at this point in time, what I'd like to do is uh, we'd like to do a poll and just assess uh, interest in trying for people. We have um, we have an option for attendees to see if they're interested in trying to do a free 14-day trial of uh, Club East Jenkins team. So if you can please present that poll, that'd be great. Yeah, so it's, uh, it should be arriving on your screen any minute now, if it's not there already, and it looks like it is because we've got uh, folks uh, who are uh, submitting their answers for the poll. And we'll give it about uh, five or six more seconds and then we'll go ahead and move forward. So if you haven't filled out your answer, go ahead and do that now. And we'll close it now. Okay, great. So let me just wrap up uh, with a summary slide, and then from there we'll just go into questions and answers. So <clears throat> we've talked a lot about uh, a product we are very excited to release to the market, and I just want to let you know, hey, now why do you care? Why is it important that Clobby's Jenkins team could be something that could help you? Well. There's some key components to it and some key benefits behind it. So we have a very, a very solid Jenkins distribution. We have verified integrations and a uh, legendary support organization. So the net benefit is that <clears throat> will you get the option to be, get the best of what open source has to offer with a stable, reliable release and the support that you need 
so you can deploy confidently and get those soft that those software applications out there quicker and faster. You have the, you know be able to up you able to upgrade Jenkins without any worries going forward. You'll be able to use the DevOps tools that you uh, enjoy without having to change the way that you uh, develop and uh, you know uh, any of your internal processes and you can eliminate a lot of the guesswork with regard to taking um, advantage of the huge plugin ecosystem. And last, you have direct access to engineers or developers, developer level engineers who can help support your particular instance of Jenkins, plus a wealth of resources, whether that be free training, being able to talk directly to other users in the community, as well as get an understanding of what best practices there are. So having said that, um, I would say that at this point, I'm going to open it up for uh, questions. I, I really enjoyed you guys being on the call. So if you can um, go ahead and type in your questions here, we'll go ahead and get started from that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bhavani. We've gotten a ton of questions in so far from the audience, which is really awesome. Um, but I do want to let you know that uh, if for some reason we're not able to get to your question during the webinar, uh, Bhavani and Andres both are going to be getting copies of the questions, so I'm sure they would be more than happy to uh, follow up with you offline and uh, get the answer that you're looking for. Okay, moving with that in mind, let's go ahead and get to those questions. Robert is asking, is it possible to use or connect a Jenkins slave on a private server with a hosted Jenkins server? Andres will have to answer that one. <laughs> a little technical. <laughs> Do we still have Andres? Sorry, yes. We, I was meeting. Can you repeat it, please? Sure. Is it possible to use or connect a Jenkins slave on a private server with a hosted Jenkins server? Well, we, we, we would have to go through all the details on the connectivity, but I don't see any, any limitation. If there are the, the connectivity needed for, for the protocols between the, the master and the agent, there are several options, the SSH, the G, JNLP, and, and all the connectivity concerns are satisfied, uh, I don't see any, any problem. We could follow up if there is some a specific configuration that may, that may have any issue, but there should be no problem. Okay, great. Thank you. Next question is from James who asks, how does this new version integrate with the in Jenkins operations platform? You mean the operation center? Correct. Uh, that's if, probably, yeah, that's okay. probably what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want me? Shall I ask? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Cloudbeam Jenkins team does not include the, the components to, to connect to, a, to an operations center instance. For that, you should use the, the client master from CJP or the managed master from Cloudbeam Jenkins Enterprise. Cloudbeam yeah. Jenkins team is designed to be used on, as an isolated master. So the, the recommended approach is to, for our potential customers, is to try to get, if you want to use a, a management capability, that functionality is going to be delivered in the long run on CloudBees Jenkins Enter Enterprise. So that would be your best choice. The operations center will not be available with CloudBees Jenkins team at this point in time. Okay. All right. Great. So Mike has uh, kind of a two-part question. Uh, his first one is, what plugins are in the core distribution? And then how are plugins that are not in the core distribution curated and integrated? Okay, for the, the components in the in the in the core distribution, they they will be listed in the plug in the plugin site in CVM. And they are all right now. There are around 120, including in, in Cloudbeam Jenkins team, and they go through all the decoration and, and all that stuff. All the other plugins that currently are not part of the distribution, they are. Uh, they are also available in the plugin manager if you have access to the CloudBees update site. And the thing that Beekeeper does is that is for those uh, for those plugins that are outside the distribution, we let you perform the, the installation. In the CVN side, you can see that they are not verified, not compatible, so they are other plugins. But we filter those that would break the recommendation. And the configuration. For example, if you want to install a plugin that is available in the update center but it's not included in the distribution, that won't be compatible with the plugins that we are um, 
betting or with the versions of the plugin that we are betting, we are going to filter the plugin and offer you a compatible and compatible version if it exists. If it does not exist, we will just filter the, the plugins. That part of the things that Beekeeper does in trying to um, help you maintain your instance in the recommended configuration. I would like to add that if you if you if the um, question the person who's asking the question, you can go to go.cloudbees.com, and if you there's a there's a link in the top uh, navigation called plugins. If you click on that, it will present you with the option. If you hit browse on there, that browse button will then present the option to be able to look at all the plugins. You can uh, filter them by verified compatible or not either verified or compatible in which case you'll see all the non-tested plugins that are the universe, the universe of plugins that are available. Excellent because that was actually another question that we had so thanks for okay. <laughs> answering that. <laughs> okay our next question is from Jed who's at, who asks does the one button upgrade automatically update plugins where required? Yes. And it will provide uh, several simulations depending on the enforcement options you have in Beekeeper. We have seen that there are several enforcement options, but it will be it will upgrade all the plugins that are needed to keep the recommended configuration in a coordinated way. The idea between having these incremental upgrades is that uh, you shouldn't be upgrading uh, plugins on an isolated way. The thing is that hey, pick changes in a coordinated way that have been through all the hardening and testing and quality assurance process so that you get new features, new fixes without losing any of the benefits of the cloud Cloudbees assurance program. So yes, Beekeeper in an incremental upgrade upgrades in a coordinated way all the plugins that are needed specifically for your instance. I mean it only upgrades plugins that are installed and it will only install new plugins is if one of the upgrades has brought a new dependency. Okay, all right. As a follow-up, he uh, asked, can you run in dry mode so you can see what changes are being made to plugins and any other features? Uh, right now, you only have a simulation, which is the one that we have seen in the, in the demo, okay. which is, okay, this is what is going to happen, but there's not more, uh, more advanced dry run is not available at this moment. Okay, all right, great. Um, okay, next question is from Ken who asks, does Teams support small groups such as two to three developers? Yes, there's no reason it can't. That's an easy one. Okay, and then a follow-up question. Uh, can Teams still be used for continuous integration? Yes, yes absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I guess Ken is a really happy person right now. <laughs> So, okay, our next question then is from Anish who asks, do we get assistance in creating the integration and delivery workflow? Uh, the, so the customer success managers can help coordinate and give you guidance on that. And you, yeah, you, you, yeah, we, 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 and then the engineers that we have, the, the actual um, uh, technical support engineers can help with the balance of that. So they can help you get started with templates, et cetera. And then you can finish it up with the um, uh, with the actual technical support engineers that we and, have. And on CBN, you are going to find a growing set of best practices and knowledge-based articles and all that stuff that is also continually being improved. And it's a great resource to to get started in that, and especially tailored for for the use cases of our customers. Right. All right. Um, just a reminder to the audience, if you have a question for Bhavani or Andres, please um, don't hesitate. You can still get your, your question in. And as I said before, if we don't get to it during the webinar, they'll, they'll be happy to follow up with you offline and, and get the answers that you're looking for. Okay, our next question is from Jason. Uh, he's asking, so say when a bug in a community plugin is found after moving to Jenkins' team or a community plugin change via an upgrade breaks a job, who fixes the plugin and when would the plugin update be pushed out? He says many community plugins are not frequently fixed. Well, for, for plugins that are, in, that are inside the, the verification program, oh, sorry, inside the, the Cloud Disk Assurance program, as part of the verification, there are proactively contributions from Cloud Disk engineers to, to those plugins. 
we work in uh, string coordination with the with the maintainers but for plugins that are considered verified and the, there are uh, proactive um, engineering resources that are contributing to that once the, the plugin is the the fix is committed to to the master branch and a new release is performed we uh, refresh the, the verified version in the in the distribution and we deploy it in the in the next available uh, normally in a rolling release but if, if the fix is uh, of a really high severity uh, it would deserve an incremental release okay great uh, just doing a time check here we're about 10 minutes to the top of the hour so we have time for a few more questions our next one is from Jeremiah who asks, does professional services offer a migration assistance from a current Jenkins install? Yes, uh, it's a simple answer. We do, uh, but I think there's even documentation. So you can, you can't, you know, we, we're not at the, we're a company built along the lines of teaching people how to fish rather than fishing for themselves. So we have documentation, you're welcome to use it, otherwise you, you can contact professional services absolutely, especially if you have a large, huge master and, um, and hundreds of jobs, it might be more of a challenge, so. All right, great, thank you. Uh, let's see, we have another question here from Stefan who asks, um, how about when you need to downgrade a version of a plugin? What are some of the best practices around that? Uh, well, downgrades are always much more uh, risky than upgrades because normally if there are some uh, changes in the data that the plugin is managing that the old version does not understand, the possibility of, of having a, something that breaks is, is greater. So the, the thing is that you can downgrade plugins. In fact, you can downgrade plugins through, through Wikipedia if you want, but please also, please always take a, a backup because the, 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 the rule of thumb would be if you can avoid the downgrade, avoid it because there, are, there is great effort in every component in Jenkins to offer uh, backward compatibility but going the other way around is much, much more difficult and it would basically block the, the development of, of many features. So if you can avoid the downgrade, avoid it and always take a backup before performing. Okay, wise advice, definitely. Okay, uh, next question then is, actually it's a follow-up from uh, Jeremiah. He's, uh, he's, he's throwing in a lot of questions today, which is great. What is the process for getting a new plugin vetted? Oh, I may have be, I'm able to pull up, may be able to pull up a slide that, uh, that um, uh, Andres can uh, walk through. So let me um, try to um, uh, unhide a slide and uh, show it to you guys and then have Andres kind of cover it so that he can kind of reference this as part of the, uh, so okay. I, I, I think, I think I'm, I'm showing this correctly. So. Yes, sure. But uh, I think that also the, the question was involved in, there are some plugins that are now part of the assurance program. How can we get a new a plugin that is not in that place to be, the, let's say, up next in the queue? That could be the question. Um, it's, uh, the, the question is actually, what is the process for getting a new plugin vetted? So okay. um, I'm not sure exactly beyond okay. that. No problem. And as we say, one of the things that we have to do is uh, there's one plugin that we want to, to add. It can be from different, from different places, the idea. But of course, one of them is that every uh, cloud-based customer has several uh, lines of communication of feedback and of course they can they can propose things and they will be analyzed and, and prioritized but the thing is once there is a, a plugin that is going to be included in the verification we do two main branches of activities related to that which are basically identified in, in that slide Bhavan is showing but the first part is that we say okay we, we talk, which are the critical use cases that the plugin must satisfy what is the must have that the plugin must offer in a real, re reliable and confident way. So, and that is going to guide every other step that we are going to do at the, at the end. The thing that there are basically two branches after we select a plugin, we identify the, the critical use case and we select a version that we want to include or refresh in our distribution, what we call the single component perspective, which is taking many, some of the stuff that is in all we related to the plugin by itself, such as documentation that dependencies are coherent, that there are good test coverage based on the critical 
test uh, in the critical use cases because for us it's better to have a 20% coverage if it's covering all the critical use cases that are 90% coverage that is not covering any of the critical use cases than the QA tools such as uh, static analysis, signature analysis and all that stuff is, uh, is included, that the, co that the code follows several best practice. We have an internal catalog of best practice that we go through all the plugins that to see that they are uh, developed uh, according to them. And we also perform a review of the issues that are open. And this is a, a part of the, this very important ongoing effort that cloud this perform uh, continually before getting the plugins we say okay with these open issues that currently are because every plugin that is actively developed has some open issues it's okay to uh, perform the refresh or perform the initial in inclusion some of these issues should be prioritized with cloud -based resources we should wait for the maintainer that we know is working on that it's okay because it's not a regression there is a, a really big discussion related to that before adding or refreshing a new plugin. And that's when we are talking about a single component. But as Babani has insisted from the beginning, the, the, the big thing about Clappy Jenkins team and the rock solid distribution is that we are not talking about components in isolation. We are talking about many components, the core, and we are talking about more than 100 plugins working together. We must be sure that when we take all the components in the specified versions, everything is working and is, uh, as intended. And that was what we call the distribution perspective. And there is another great deal of te testing um, and things that we do to guarantee that part. So for each component, there is many things related to testing, quality, and all that stuff that is performed for that plugin and then running in the context of, of the distribution. Because that's one thing that's really important here. The context in which the, 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 the components are developed individually may not be the same one in which you are going to run it. Cloud Beef Assurance Program provides you with the assurance that the things that we are delivering have been through all the hardening in the configuration that we are going to recommend you. Excellent. Okay. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> okay, we've got uh, lots more questions here. Um, Ken is asking, is Team a service hosted by CloudBeast or a product we can install on our own servers? You would, you would install it on, on your own servers. Okay. All right, great. I think we have time for maybe one more question and then we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Um, Let's see, uh, another technical question here. Timothy is asking, when will Jenkins Agent be upgraded to use Microsoft.NET Framework version later than 3.5? Uh, For example, 4.5. Uh, is that something that's in the works? Yes, I think that is, uh, I would have to, to follow up with the, the team that is uh, working on that part, but I think there is an ongoing, an ongoing effort, but I don't have the exact information right now. But I think there is activity right now in related to that, but I, I would need to confirm. Okay, great. And we'll go ahead and make this our last question for the day. Naveen asks, can we add and use our own developed plugins on CloudBees Jenkins? Uh, yes, you can install every plugin, of course. Uh, given that Beekeeper have no uh, knowledge of those plugins, it won't perform any, any warning of them. Of course, if your plugins has dependencies that are not compatible with the uh, with the recommended configuration. A beekeeper may raise an, an issue or even filter it from the from the plugin manager, as we can see. But of course, you can install. You have the same extensibility in Cloud with Jenkins. We are not removing anything. We are just adding additional confidence and assurance. Okay, great. Well, I think that is all the time that we have for the questions. Every single one of them was great, and we have a lot more in the queue. So um, I apologize that we weren't able to get to all of them. Um, but uh, thank you again for submitting your questions. Uh, we will definitely uh, be able to follow up with you guys after the event uh, to make sure that your questions are answered. I am sure that both Bhavani and Andres will make themselves available for you by email.
Um, and with that, I would like to uh, thank the audience for joining us today during this webinar, Standardizing Jenkins with CloudBee's Jenkins team. And I also would like to thank Bhavani Rao and Andres Rodriguez for, for giving such a great presentation. I'm sure the audience got a ton out of it. I know I did. Um, please check the, uh, the DevOps.com website for future uh, webinars. And again, this uh, webinar will be available on demand in about 24 hours. Uh, but uh, for now, this is Charlene O'Hanlon, the moderator for today's event, and I'm signing off. Have a great day, everybody.